Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Shannon Bryan, and I'm a librarian at the Belleville Public Library. And uh, this is a uh, presentation um, with Orland French as our speaker. And uh, this is the library working together with our partners, the Hastings County Historical Society. So thank you to our partners. Um, for those of you who have never attended um, a Zoom webinar with us before, um, I just want to let you know that we can't see or hear uh, you guys that are listening at home. So if you have any concerns, comments, or any questions, you can use the chat feature. Um, on my screen, it's in the bottom um, kind of centered, and you can actually type a message to us and I will be monitoring the chat throughout the entire presentation. So if you have any questions or whatever, you can just let us know. And then when um, Orland is done his talk, I will go through the questions and we'll get those answers for you. Um, so I'm going to pass this along to Richard Hughes, the president of the Hastings County Historical Society. And thank you again, everyone, for joining us this afternoon. Off to you, Richard. Yes, thank you, Shannon. And uh, welcome, everyone, uh, as we... Uh, as we as we move into the summer weather, I'm sure we're all very pleased to see that. And uh, you know, it, it always strikes me that uh, there are three things right about this time that are probably on people's minds uh, after the long winter that we've all endured. Eh? So we thought, first of all, we, we want to get out. We want to get some fresh air. Secondly, we want to get some exercise. It's been a long, long winter. And thirdly, we want to do something interesting. And I think uh, by the end of this presentation today, uh, when you ponder these three points, to get out and get some fresh air, get some exercise and do something interesting, I think the message being delivered today is going to hit those three points dead on. I'm sure that uh, that will be the case. So, so with that, I'm going to, uh, do we have Jim uh, present? No? No? Okay. So with that, it's my pleasure then to introduce a guest speaker who is the past president of the Historical Society and uh, has been working uh, for the Society for, for many years, a man of a uh, very distinguished uh, career, both in journalism and, and as an author of books, uh, a person whose mind is always filled with, with great ideas and uh, has done a great deal of work to promote our city and, and, our, and the history of our city. And uh, that is uh, Mr. Orland French. So I'm going to turn it over to Orland and we're all keen to hear what you've got to say today. Well, thank you, Richard. I am interested to hear that you're praising the weather because we tried to do this two weeks ago and we got cut off by a thunderstorm and a power outage. <laughs> so, so I've had more time to practice. I hope I get somewhere today. Uh, but I just checked the forecast and it says for this afternoon, partly cloudy with a risk of a thunderstorm. So we can get through the next hour or so, we'll be okay, I think. So uh, let's go with a, a fascinating presentation here. I'll give you a little better picture of myself, of what I do with the Historical Society. They put me in costume once in a while. This was the unveiling of the Pinnacle Street Railway plaque on uh, Pinnacle Street at the Belva Club. And uh, because the, the railway ran down the middle of the street and the street was kind of busy, we decided to have it indoors. And I got up for a bit of a, a presentation on uh, as a locomotive engineer and I had someone else helping me, uh, someone buying a ticket. Anyway, we had some fun with that. So I, I wouldn't want you to be bored by a plague of plaques. So I'm trying to liven up the presentation a bit. One of the things that historical societies like to do is erect historical plaques to tell you what happened where. And you know how they go. On this day, in this year, somebody really important did something to further our actions, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but there's a lot of information on those plaques because they're kind of expensive and you've got to cram the words in tightly and uh, use as few as possible to get the information across. I used to have one that said, on this day in 1892, on this site, absolutely nothing happened. But that wasn't too serious, except that further research determined that something had happened on that day. They had put up a plaque. Now, let's go on to the next one. This is a serious plaque that we put up for the Great Belleville Floods. If you were standing on this spot in 1936, something would have happened. Your feet would have got wet. Belleville used to get flooded periodically when ice backed up on the Moya River at the bay. And this plaque on Business and Front Street marks the high water mark of a flood in 1936. 
the plaque was erected in 2017. And uh, by the, in, sorry, as a part of a series of plaques in Belleville and Hastings County. Well, let's talk about what an historical plaque is. A commemorative plaque, sometimes called an historical marker or historical plaque, is a plate of metal or ceramic or stone or wood. It's fastened to a wall or stone, a fence or other vertical surface. It usually bears text and an image. It can commemorate the birthplace of a famous person, a battle, or some historic event, or a place worthy of visiting. And so the purposes of this discussion, we will not consider plaques to be noted in the opening of a bridge by a worthy municipal council. We are concentrating on historical plaques, which tell you about a significant piece of history. And what we're doing here also is introducing you to a new form of historical plaque. You don't have to go anywhere to see it. You can pull it up right on the screen of your computer or your smartphone or your laptop or any other transportable device link to the internet and read every historical plaque in the county right from the comfort of wherever you are. But don't do that just yet. Keep those phones in your pockets. Let us tell you about them first. And that's what we'll get around to when we show you some more pictures of people like Richard Hughes in full costume. Hey, Richard. Very handsome picture. <laughs> in Hastings County, you are probably familiar with three forms of historical plaques. The most obvious by sheer number are the large blue and gold signs erected by the Ontario Heritage Trust. There are 20 of eight of these in the county, and they go back uh, quite a few years. These plaques are not cheap and can run close to $8,000 by the time they are approved, translated, and installed. So that was on Belleville City Hall here in Belleville, up north in, in uh, Maynooth in North Hastings County. Uh, there's one commemorating the work of surveyor Joseph S. Peterson, who determined the route of an east-west colonization road. The road was constructed in 1858-1863, and today is the route of a provincial highway to a vacation area. One of the more recent plaques we put up is one for James Bertram Collum who was a co-discoverer of insulin. And he was one of Canada's most prolific medical researchers in the first half of the 20th century. He was born and raised in Belleville, received a PhD in biochemistry from the University of Toronto in 1916, and on leave from the University of Alberta in 1921, a Professor J. J. R. McLeod invited him to work with Frederick Banting and Charles Best on a substance they hoped would treat diabetes. In 1922, Dr. Call pr produced the first insulin suitable for use on human beings, an essential contribution to the treatment that has since saved millions of lives. He died in London, Ontario. You'll also find in Belleville a few of these. These are put up by the Historic Sites and Monuments Board of Canada um, for national historic sites, such as those at Glenmore, which is a national historic site. These are usually rectangular, they're erected by the federal government, and they are bilingual. And then you'll find around town small plaques like this on individual, individual houses. This, for example, the Bell Riggs House, built by John Bell, who was a prominent Canadian Railway Council and was erected by City Council in Belleville and Black Act in 1985. And then there are even smaller plaques, like this one, Heritage Belleville, designated on the Ontario Heritage Act. These tell you how, what buildings have been designated for, for heritage protection. And you'll find them as you walk around the old parts of Belleville on the uh, outsides of, of houses. Here's a newer one, uh, Simpsons Tavern. Simpsons Tavern was down on the waterfront in Belleville near Dundas Street, where James and Margaret Simpson built a log tavern in 1797 at the intersection of what is now Dundas Street and Front Street. And I'm sure sometime James and said to Margaret, Someday, my dear, they will elect a bronze plaque on this corner in memory of the work we've done here. 
So we go further north and we find another tavern up in Bandrock. And that was another plaque erected uh, a couple of years ago by the Historical Society. That's not, that's on the corner, uh, main corner of downtown. It's not the original hotel, nor is it the one that's there now, uh, but there have been a fire, number of fires in that location. Our plaques go back a long way, uh, not just in places you might expect, like Britain, but in other cultures, such as the Benin Empire, which flourished in present day Nigeria. History was preserved on brass or bronze plaques from the 13th to the 16th century. And similar bronze or brass plaques were used in medieval Europe in the same period, set into the walls of churches or tombs. Now, the British always seem to have more fun with plaques than we do. Uh, I like this one. We have a joke in the historical society that what we do is go out and look at places where things used to be. Well, the quirky British find any kind of reason to put a plaque. This one is for anyone who wanted to know how the former Teapot Row got its name. Teapot Row was a row of houses, which is no longer there. It says, formerly Teapot Row, the last house on the right-hand end of the row had a huge teapot in the window. So in other words, Teapot Row was gone, so was the last house in Teapot Row, and so was a huge teapot which was in the window. But it still earns a plot. Let's go back to Canada, where, um, it may not be known among hockey fans, particularly fans of the Toronto Maple Leafs, that the Montreal Canadiens were founded in part in Belleville. This plaque was erected a few years ago outside the Sports and Wellness Centre on Canterton Road, which commemorates the fact that the Montreal Canadiens were founded in 1909 by a trio of young hockey players called the Flying Frenchmen. None was from Quebec. Jack Laviolette was born in Belleville, Newsy Lalonde was from Cornwall, and Cannibal Petrie was from Renfrew. All three were later inducted to the Hockey Hall of Fame for their part. Legendary hockey franchise, which my wife is very pleased about, and I, as a Maple Leaf fan, maybe less so, but they are a great team nonetheless. And they started here in Belleville, believe it or not. Now, when you're searching for historical plaques, you may find some at ground level. I drove this by this plaque down in Myers Pier a dozen of times before I noticed it. It commemorates the third oil purchase from the deal to buy what was downtown Belleville from the Mississauga Indians, the Anishinaabeg, who were finally concluded, which was finally concluded in 2010, 200 years after no negotiations had begun. No wonder indigenous people get frustrated with our government. Here's another at ground level. I'm going to read this one because it has a little more whimsical language and you might find on some historical plaques. It was, the uh, text was constructed by our own colorful writer, the late C.W. Hunt, seen on the right here, eating a hot dog, which I'm sure Richard Hughes purchased for him. Um, this was, again, the placing, the whole party had to place this uh, plaque. And it says, for nearly a century, a converted wooden boathouse housed the city of Belleville's most colorful and controversial institution. Every civic election, aspiring politicians would nervously endure caustic jabs and verbal skewing by Foster Ward's working house wits, who for one night could expose the sins and broken promises of their supposed betters. Well, while, while pipe and cigar smoke choked the air thicker than a London fog, the language could make a sailor blush. Women were barred from entry, but after a historic and lively battle, they won admittance in 1988, and the wit meter rose even higher. So to the more modern times now, um, one of our plaques we put up at the, uh, uh, where are we here? Oh, fire station number two, 19, in 2017, Historical Society uh, placed a series of small plaques through it downtown Bell. And the first ceremony was at fire hall number two, which is now Chilango's Mexican restaurant. And it drew a small crowd of our traditional supporters some of our members began dressing in period costumes for these events. As we unveiled other plaques through the summer, the crowds grew larger, especially when the event was held in a rural area. And in here you'll see our president here, a couple of our directors here, the former mayor, Castle Christopher, another director there, a couple over here, and our, uh, on the extreme left side there, Amanda Hill, and uh, 
what you got here to me. So here's a group dressed in costume, and they're uh, commemorating the history of the Thomasburg Spring runoff. Sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> the Thomasburg Spring <laughs> off Highway 37 in Thomasburg. And you can see just behind these two gentlemen here, there's a spring there. And so they're dressed in costume because not just for the event, but after the, uh, the unveil unveiling of the plaque for the spring, we went up the road to a, a town, Township Hall and had a, uh, a presentation in costume. This one is a few years ago. You can tell by the clothing that's not recent. It's probably 1970s when the leisure suits, and you'll see these two here, were in fashion. There's another one back there. Um, and this fellow here is Jerry Boyce. When he was a young high school teacher and becoming a very prominent uh, member of the Historical Society. I think Jerry was three times around. So this is up at Ormsby. There's a plaque that's still there. I think the corral they built here is gone, but that's at Ormsby. Uh, commemorating the historic Hastings Road. Um, moving here now to Chisholm's Mills. Uh, Chisholm's Mills has been owned by the same family for three generations, and for the erection of a plaque there, uh, they kindly oh, cleared out one of their storage sheds from lumber and set up uh, a little party platform for us. We had a pretty good time there. And then some of us went out and talked about it. And here's Richard being filmed outside by uh, Kojiko describing the history of Chisholm Mills, which is in the background. So in 2019, we took a break on the spring program, but we are planning three plaques for Trenton in conjunction with the Trent Port Historical Society. Unfortunately, the COVID-19 pandemic has forced the postponement of unveilings. We will return to the program as soon as possible. Plaques are in storage waiting to be uh, put up, but uh, perhaps not this year, depending on circumstances we're good. Now, the next few pictures illustrate some of the adventures I had, had in tracking down plaques in Hastings County. For example, I knew there was one commemorating the Marmor Iron, Iron Works, and I went up to take a picture of it, and I couldn't find it anywhere. So finally, I found a couple of public works guys. They said, you know what the sign? And they said, oh, yeah, it's over here in the shop. Uh, somebody ran over. So they went inside the shop and they dragged it and I got a picture of it. In this picture, uh, we're looking into Renfrew County. This is the very end, the very top of Hastings County. There's a road down below, that's the boundary. And over here is Renfrew County. And uh, we couldn't find the plaque we were looking for, but there's another one there that's called Look at Point. And um, unfortunately, somebody has obscured it with vandalism and painting on it. But I know what the story was anyway. Um, the lake beyond the plaque is, is Kamenisteg Lake, and you're looking into Renfrew County. In 1912, a steamer sank on the lake and nine passengers were drowned. But the significant story is that three passengers were saved when they clung to a floating casket with a dead man inside. The casket had been sitting on the deck of the, deck of the ship when it, uh, when it sank. That story made Ripley's, believe it or not, with the headline, Dead Man Saves Three. Now this is one of the most, the most interesting tales that I found on a plaque in Hastings County. This is the story of Henry Gowan. It's Gowan spelled G-A-U-E-N. You'll find it on this plaque on the west side of Highway 62, south of Maydot, on the side of what looks like a farm uh, livestock camp. Inside are the gravestones of Henry and Mary Gowan. The short story of Henry Gowan is that he was a sailor who was dispatched on a search mission from England on the ship HMS Investigator on a search for the Sir John Franklin expedition in 1850. They sailed south from England all the way down around Cape Horn and up the west side of the Americas to enter the Northwest Passage from the west side in the late summer. They got stuck on the ice for two winters, were rescued by another ship, that two got stuck on the ice, and finally they were rescued by another, another ship. 
But when they got back to England, the crew received a reward of £10,000 for being the first to sail through the North and Northwest Passage from west to east. Henry uh, took a share of, of, of the reward, found a bride, and he eventually began farming in Hastings County, but as far away from the sea as he could manage. He became the first president of the Ivanhoe Cheese Factory and lived until 1899. The plaque is sponsored by Gay Lead Food Cooperative, which owns a cheese factory, the Maydock Lions Club, and the municipality of Southern Hastings. The great thing with this history is that there's a lot more online and there's a link from the webpage to Wikipedia. Here's a series of other memorials we have around the area. The Afghanistan Memorial near CFB Trenton marking the names of the fallen and our nation's mission to Afghanistan. It's well worth visiting near the air base. This is a large boulder marking Mount St. Patrick Cemetery in Belleville. All the stones have been removed. And uh, there's just an open parkland there now. This is uh, a monument looking up, showing, uh, looking up the survey line between Thurlow and Sydney townships. The surveyor, a real surveyor, named Mike McAlpine of Bancroft, was used as a model for the monument. Uh, not far north of Belleville, there is a uh, stone church. It is now used as a private resident by a policeman who is a former student of mine. What makes this former church significant is a type of rubble stone construction like this. The walls, and there are only three buildings like this in the area. Now, most of you are maybe familiar with Roy Bonesteel, who is a, a well-known uh, television broadcaster in Belleville, lived near, near Trenton. This is the um, memorial, memorial of a different style where he sits and uh, waits on his bench in bronze fashion to uh, share a book with you. Nearby, the visiting garden is directed to uh, Hugh O'Neill, a prominent local politician in the provincial cabinet for some time. Still with individuals, we are with Deganawida, who is a Huron by birth and Mo a Mohawk by adoption and founder of the Five Nations of the Iroquois Confederacy. He was born near here sometime during the early 15th century. This plaque is uh, a monument that's near uh, the desert Ronto. This is Christ Church. Her Majesty's Royal Chapel of Mohawk near Desirado. At this church, the Crown acknowledges its debt to the Mohawk people for their support in the American Revolution. A number of other plaques telling the story of the Mohawks can be found in the area. There's a lot of mining in Hastings County, and this monument in Maydot, sorry, in Marmara, recalls the role of Harold Coleman Rickaby in the development of iron deposits in the Marmara area. Outside the Tweed Heritage Museum, this plaque commemorates a large and local smallpox outbreak in 1884. Health authorities reacted quickly and effectively, laying the groundwork for the creation of local boards of health which exist today. Outside the uh, Bancroft North Hastings Museum, there's a plaque commemorating the Monk Colonization Road, which was one of a series of roads which opened up North Hastings. It was constructed for the real purpose of opening up a wilderness area to settlement and providing an alternative, less vulnerable military road between the Upper Great Lakes and the Ottawa Valley. It's lined from the vicinity of the creature to the junction of the Hastings and Mississippi colonization road at the hamlet of North York River, which is now Bancroft, was surveyed in 1864-65 at the time of the American Civil War, not just before Canada became a nation. George Beer, the 
to Belleville Counselor, who promoted local sports and fittingly his plaque is right beside baseball field in Thurlow Park, where he is always next up to bat. Moving back to churches again, here is a plaque commemorating the location of the United Church, which stood at Point Anne at one time, a very vibrant cement company just east of Belleville, now practically abandoned. Now here's a challenge. Mount Kelion is a drumlin in Quinty, Quinty West, which affords a splendid view of the Bay of Quinty, the Trent River, and Trenton. The viewing platform is 101 steps above the clock in the parking lot, but there's a good view of the area. It's part of the RP to read, but it was designated as a historical site in 1989 by the former city of Trenton. It's a drumlin 191 feet above the Bay of Quinty, created by glacial movement. The origin of Mount Pelion's name is Greek, but the story of why it was called Mount Pelion has been lost in due time. Samuel de Champlain passed through this area in 1615 with a war party of 500 Huron Indians and most certainly scaled at Mount Pelion to survey the surrounding area. The cannon that sits atop Mount Pelion is a British Royal Navy cannon dated 1808 and was placed at the Mount Pinnacle in 1880. The redevelopment of Mount Pelion began in 1999 with the replacement of the stairs and an observation tower. It was officially dedicated on July the 1st, 2000, as part of the city's and federal government's Millennium Project. As I said, it's quite a view from the top, and people will come a long way to see it. This is my friend David Schooler from New Zealand, and he maybe tuned in this morning, I don't know, uh, this afternoon, and uh, he's looking all over the the Trent River in the background and other views of the area. Um, a plaque was George Zagouris, who was well known as the mayor of the people in Belleville. He served as a city councilor from 1973 to 1980, and again as mayor from 80 to 91, and again from 2008 to 2003. He was the mayor when Belleville City Hall underwent a major renovation in 1988. The log cabin uh, monument, standing at the foot of Front Street and Dundas Street, marks the arrival of loyalists in Belleville in 19, sorry, in 1784. There are no more other plaques in this area, including one for Gwendolyn who at age 18 and never having ridden a horse, rode to one to Washington to invite President Calvin Coolidge to the 140th UEL celebrations in 1924. He didn't accept. However, sometime later, when Lazier's plot telling her story was unveiled in 2005, she arrived in the stretch limousine. And the big significance for me was I was there and unable to interview her, and uh, it was quite, a, quite an event for her. Able to, she has since died. Now, Many plaques honor old cemeteries which have disappeared. This one locates the old Methodist Episcopal Dundas Street burying ground, which has now become a playground. Sometimes plaques commemorate events outside the area. Uh, this piece of I beam came from the World Trade Center, which was destroyed by terrorists in 9 11. It is displayed in the available fire station as a tribute to fire crews and other first responders who died in the construction of the Trade Center. Again, going up north, we have a, a church built entirely of marble, which was quarried from the uh, quarry next door. And it's now uh, a marble art center in Actinolite. Now, let me tell you how the road trips on YouTube or your, your, your TV are available. We have here uh, J.P. Lemieux, who is the producer from Kojic TV, talking with Richard Hughes out on a shoot. And it's actually that one is at Chisholm's Mills. Um, so last year, we took uh, these films and we created a number of videos about the location and meaning of historical plots in Hastings County. We worked with J.P. Lemieux uh, of Kojic to create a five-minute video documenting the sources and location of these plots. 
The series Road Trips to Hastings County was conceived as a way of guiding you around the county to these sites. Look up Hastings Historical Facts on the internet for this website. That's Hastings County Historical Facts. .ca. You follow the directions, you'll find the road trips in the third box at the bottom, one, two, three, over here on the right, discover road trips in Hastings County. That's it. It'll give you all the information you need to get out of the house, get into the car, drive around Hastings County, and learn something new and enjoy the summer. You can also find the video of each location on the playlist of Your TV Buddy on YouTube. Now, just before we wind up this very Modest presentation. I'll read you one more plaque. Since you're now an avid plaque reader, I hope you enjoy it, but you'll have to bear with me for a minute. This appeared in Toronto a couple of years ago. The Toronto Recursive History Project of Toronto's Recursive History. This plaque was commemorated on October the 10th, 2018, to commemorate its own commemoration. Plaques like this are one, are an integral part of the campaign to support more plaques like this one. By reading this plaque, you have made a valuable addition to the number of people who have read this plaque. To this day, and up to the end of the sentence, this plaque continues to be read by people like yourself. One final word from me, safe travels and happy plaque and Hastings. Thank you very much, Orland. Um, we will take any questions now or comments if anyone would like to use the chat feature down in the bottom of the middle of your screen, I believe. Let me see if there's any questions here. None yet. I don't think. Is there anything you wanted to add, Richard or, or Orland, maybe at the end there? I would like to make a comment about our launch of the Stroll for Discovery, just a 30-second comment. We have, we have yeah, something on the screen. There. Oh, did you want me to... Are you sharing something or...? Yes, 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 yes. Can I go up to full screen? Oh gosh, yes, of course. It hasn't come up yet. Uh, oh, I see, you wanna, okay. I see what you're talking about. Speaker view, is that better, Richard? Uh, is that well, what you meant? No, I, I see you. Okay. So are you trying to share your screen so that everyone can see what yes, you're looking I, I, at? Or? Yes, I want to be, yes, because I want to show, I want to show this on full screen. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so you can go ahead and, and start talking and it, it's, we'll go with whoever's talking will come up on the big okay. screen. Yeah, well, as I say, the, well, well, first of all, thank you, Orland, for your, the tour of the plaques. And uh, there are over a hundred in Hastings County. And, and of course, when people are out and about, it's certainly worthwhile to stop the car and stretch your legs and, and read a plaque. And uh, there's always something to learn. But this week, the Hastings County Historical Society launched a major new program. It's what we call the uh, Stroll of Discovery, the Riverfront Trail. And this is a 12 page booklet I have here, which lists 40 sites along the riverside from Myers Pier all the way to Highway 401. And if people, as people walk along any part of this, they, uh, they can uh, see the historical buildings, the bridges, the parks in front of them. And at the same time with this, they can read the little history of that. So it makes it a very interesting uh, outing. As I said, most of us now, we want to get out. We want to get some fresh air. We want to get some exercise. And we want to do something interesting. And this too, these... Uh, these uh, brochures. It can also be downloaded on the smartphone, but uh, it gives you a chance to walk along the Riverside Trail, see the historical sites, learn about them, and basically have a, a very pleasant outing. These booklets are available at the public library, 
at the Chamber of Commerce, at a number of stores downtown, and uh, they uh, and if we'd be pleased to provide them to anyone who wishes. They are free, of course. So I'd, I'd, you know, as I say, we're into the beautiful summer weather, and this is something the Historical Society is encouraging people to do: take a stroll along the riverside, learn some history, and and have a nice outing. So th thanks for your patience in making that little uh, plea, if you will. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so um, Orland, uh, I don't see any questions here. So I'd like to thank you very much for your presentation. It was very informative and certainly makes me want to get out and see some of these um, plaques that maybe I've been driving by and have missed uh, since I'm relatively new to Belleville. And um, I will pass this along to Richard to wrap things up. But thanks again, Orland. You're welcome. Very good. Well, th yes, thank you very much, Orland. Now, we're, we're taking the, uh, the rest of the summer off from these presentations. We won't have one in August, but uh, and we're planning September now. We, uh, we're not sure if we will be able to hold our public presentations at Maranatha in September because of the COVID conditions and the rules. But uh, if not, or possibly even with that, we will be back working with the library to bring you more interesting speakers. Thank you very much, everyone, for tuning in, and uh, we hope to see you again. Yes, thanks. And I'll just add that we have recorded this presentation, so it will be on the Historical Society's YouTube page, hopefully later this week. Okay, thanks, everyone. Thank Bye. Bye. Oh, we got to thank you all. <laughs> okay. Thanks thank very you. much. Bye. Bye-bye.